Life will not be contained. Life breaks free. It expands to new territories, crashes through barriers, painfully, maybe even dangerously. Jeff Goldblum, Jurassic Park. The following is transcribed from a speech on Redacted, Redacted, 2006. On May 11th, 1820, the HMS Beagle set sail from Woolwich, England, and set course to furtively study the shorelines of South America under Lieutenant Pringle Stokes, who was later replaced by Lieutenant Robert Fitzroy, following his suicide near Cape Horn, Chile. On this ship included future naturalist Charles Robert Darwin, a man who would lay the ambitious blueprint for current evolutionary reasoning and generate the earth-shattering theory on the progressive advancement of organic bodies and his controversial book, On the Origin of Species. This scholarly publication tells that organisms demand several thousand years to mutate. However, does that necessarily need to be the case? Can man evolve tremendously in several weeks instead of several millennia? The outlook is simplistic, yet groundbreaking. Place people in situations where they are required to acclimate the way we require them to. Dr. Braylon Dragic Title The Beagle Experiment Author Dr. Braylon Dragic Question Can humans evolve if placed under constant pressure? Hypothesis If these subjects are placed under continuous pressure, then they will evolve because of them growing used to said pressure. Materialist Three subjects Three 22 by 22 by 22 foot rooms Full-time staff and personnel 2,904 feet of padding Cochlear implants Two reliable heating and cooling systems Three journals Three reliable communication systems Audio readings and music Procedures 1. Adopt three subjects in infantry from local adoption centers. 2. Raise subjects until they reach the age of 14. 3. Place three subjects in rooms that force them to constantly adapt because of constant pressure. 4. Have continuous doctoral and psychological examinations to see the effect on their physical and mental health. 5. Allow them to have communication and distractions to stop them from going mentally ill. 6. Continue experiments until it can be affirmatively proven that the trials are a success or a failure. 7. Terminate subjects through lethal injection. Data table. Redacted. Analysis. Redacted. Conclusion and summary. Redacted. Subject Information 1 Subject 24181 Codename Erebus Gender Male Age 14 Height 61 Weight 164 pounds Date of birth February 11th 2005 Hair color Dark brown Eye color Forest green Skin color Medium cool, Caucasian dark. Goal. Increase sensitivity in cochlear and optic nerve function. Procedures. He is to receive cochlear implants and be kept in a pitch black room. White noise will be played to make sure the cochlear nerves are forced to adapt. Doctors shall perform medical examinations through 3D images of the subject's brain. If further examination is needed, Subject 241A1 slash Erebus shall be sedated and blindfolded before heading back to the medical office. Under no means is subject 241A1 slash Erebus allowed outside of his room. Subject 241A1 slash Erebus is to be allowed audiobooks and music for entertainment. Also is allowed to communicate with subject 96185 Aoda and subject 12135-SLEDDOG. Subject Information 2 Subject 96185 
Codename, Eoda. Gender, male. Age, 14. Height, 5'11 and a half. Weight, 139 pounds. Date of birth, September 3rd, 2005. Hair color, black. Eye color, amber. Skin color, deep slash black dark. Goal, increase resistance towards incalescence, heat. Procedures. He is to be placed in a special room heated with a radiator. Under no means is the room's temperature to be increased without showing resistance to it. Doctors shall perform medical examinations through 3D images of the subject's brain. If further examination is needed, subject 96185-AOTA shall be sedated before being examined through artificial technology. Under no means is subject 96185-AOTA allowed outside of his room. Subject 96185-AOTA is to be allowed audiobooks and music for entertainment, as long as allowed communicate with subject 24181-Erebus and subject 12135-SledDog. Subject 3 Information Subject 12135 Codename SledDog Gender Male Age 14 Height 5'8 Weight 128 pounds. Date of birth, December 26, 2005. Hair color, red orange. Eye color, silver blue. Skin color, fair, Caucasian light. Goal, increase resistance towards gelatity, freezing temperatures. Procedures. He is to be placed in a special room cooled with a radiator. Under no means is the room's temperature to be decreased without showing resistance to it. Doctors shall perform medical examinations through 3D images of these subjects as cephalon. If further examination is needed, subject 12135-SledDog shall be sedated before being examined through artificial technology. Under no means is subject 12135-SledDog allowed outside of his room. Subject 12135 sled dog is to be allowed audiobooks and music for entertainment, as long as allowed to communicate with the subject 24181 Erebus and subject 96185 Aota. Journal Log Day 1 I was always told that my life would be substantial, that me existing would boost the world into the future. Thinking back now, I honestly can't see how sitting in a dark room helps anyone. I guess this is my life now. Just sitting for eternity in a pitch black room. Aota and Slug Dog talked to me today. Slug Dog was always the innocent one of the group. And Aota, as much as you wanted to seem tough, was always kind to us. I honestly wish that they were never put into this. They should be in high school, like in the Catcher in the Rye struggling with tests and worrying about approximately girls or sports or college or whatever. Anything but this. I just want to know that we'll be getting out of this. Erebus Experiment Log, Week 1 Author, Dr. Braylon Dragage 24181 Log There has been a great increase in optic nerve function. However, the result is not enough for him to be able to see his surroundings. Nonetheless, we will continue to phase 2, as it needs to be started immediately. 96185 Log He has been adjusting well to his surroundings, and has gotten used to the hot temperature. He shall proceed to phase 2, where the room will be increased by 10 degrees Fahrenheit, or from 80 to 90. 12135 Log Similar to 96185, he has been adjusting well to his surroundings and has gotten used to the cold temperatures. He shall proceed to phase 2, where the room will be decreased from 10 degrees Fahrenheit, or from 40 to 30 degrees. The following is a transcribed conversation between Subject 2481, Erebus, 
In subject 96185, Aota, on day 11 of the Beagle experiment. Aota, are you there? Yeah, what's up? I don't think I'm alone here. What? I can hear something. It's the static that they play in your room. Honestly, it creeps me out too. No, it's something under the static. What? I can hear whispers. And footsteps, just softer than static. Calm down, the static and isolation are probably just getting to your head. Something is in here. Call the doctors, maybe something is going wrong in your head. Or maybe a rat got in through the vents. Just call the doctors, and you're starting to freak me out. End of conversation. Journal Log, Day 10 Have you all heard of Karma? I never knew if it was real or not, probably never will. But if it is, what did I do in my past life to justify this agony? It's cold, always cold. I don't know how much so, not any thermometers in this prison cell. I just know that it's cold. Another thing that bothers me is the emptiness of the room. There's a toilet in the corner and a food slot on the back, benches all around me. They're hard enough to support my weights, but not soft enough to cushion a fall. I guess that they made it like an insane asylum. The only thing there really is to do is to talk to Aota and Erebus. Along with filling my head with the horror of Clyde Barker and the mysteries of Agatha Christie. As of right now, I'm in the middle of House of Leaves. I think I'll finish it now, or at least do anything to escape this torment. Sled Dog Experiment Log, Week 2 Author, Dr. Braylon Dragic 24181 Log The subject has appeared to be facing great mental stress and hallucinations during his time in the room. This problem will be fixed by replacing the static in the room with classical piano music from the composers such as Ludwig von Beethoven and Frederick Chopin. Other than that, Optic and cochlear nerve functions have improved greatly, and the experiment is normal, save for an increased awareness towards his mental health. 96581 Log The subject has been again adjusting well to his surroundings, and has gotten used to the hot temperatures. He surprisingly is the only person here that continued with the experiment without dilemma, other than a spook coming from an interaction with a subject 24181. His room shall again be increased at 10 degrees Fahrenheit, from 90 to 100. 12135 Log The subject has been acclimating well to the conditions of his cell. However, he also appears to be having an increase in mental stress. Although not as great as subject 24181, he shall be combated by a temporary shutdown to install a plexiglass window between him and subject 96185's room. It will happen in the middle of the night, and both subjects will spend the night in a specially made box that stimulate the temperatures of the room while the construction occurs. The following is a transcribed conversation between Erebus and Sled Dog. Subject 24181a1 Sled Dog, are you there? Where else could I be? How's the music? I would gladly listen to clarinet concerto than that cursed static. What approximately is the window? Great. It's good to see another person. Even if it is through six inches of plexiglass. Any news on your side? Surprisingly good news. What? I can see. They turn the lights on? No, I can see in the dark. How? I don't know, maybe I just got used to it. What about you, and Aota? Maybe, I don't know. Not any thermometers in here. The same goes for Aota, but I think it's working. That's good. Anyways, I'll see you, bud. See ya, Erebus. Announcement on the Beagle Experiment Author Dr. Braylon Dragic when the experiment started, it was all an idea. A couple of scribbles on a piece of paper. 
and three toddlers raised by the fantastic caretaker, Elaine Shaw. However, look where it has gone now. We have seen encouraging results from all three subjects, so I've decided to stray from the original plan. Next week, we will be placing these subjects in far greater conditions than in the past three weeks. To see the limit that these subjects reach until physical injuries or restraints are reached. The following is a transcribed conversation between Dr. Brandon Dragage and caretaker Elaine Shaw. Ah, Miss Shaw, how are you? What was that report that you last made? Listen, I don't like this any more than you do, but it's necessary. Torture is necessary? It isn't torture. Increase until physical injury is caused. Those were your own words. Why did you not check with me first? I knew that you would never give consent. You didn't even want the experiment to begin in the first place. It's child abuse. It's science. Torturing children and giving them a lethal injection at the end of it is not science. It's what deranged psychopaths get an old Sparky over. What was I supposed to do? Let them leave? We can't house them here, and the OGE will have a field day over this if we let them leave. Then why did you start something that couldn't end without three bodies in your arms? It needed to happen. Besides, you can't make an arm without breaking a couple eggs. You also can't kill these kids without me breaking your femur. I will complete this experiment, with or without you at my side. Elaine Shaw storms off. We knew the world would not be the same. A few people laughed, a few people cried. Most people were silent. I remember the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty, and to impress him, takes on his multi-armed form and says, Now I have become death, the destroyer of worlds. J. Robert Oppenheimer the following is a transcribed conversation between Dr. Braylon Dragage and subject 12135. 12135. Sled dog. It's what everyone calls me. Why should now be any different? Well, sled dog, can you please explain to me what happened yesterday? I don't know when it was. I just know that the power went out. So around 3 o'clock? Yes. Soon after the door opened and Mrs. Shaw walked in, saying that I was leaving, Aota and Erebus were standing behind her. I thought that this was all part of the plan. It wasn't. I know that now. I didn't question walking around in the dark. I didn't question leaving for the first time in 14 years. I only started to question it when the alarms went off, but I ran because there appeared to be no other option. Okay? We were at the exit, and then the guards appeared out of nowhere. Could you please tell him to aim? We got multiple bullets embedded in our arms and legs. Mrs. Shaw got the worst of it, though. Please tell me that she's still alive. Luckily, she is. But right now, she is in solitary confinement for the crimes that she committed. Well, I guess that's better than death. It is. When can we leave? Like, when can we go back to the way things were? Soon. Okay. Thank you for your time, Subject 12135. Liar. Journal Log, Day 46. I didn't tell him. As of now, he thinks that we don't know that he's planning on killing us. She also told us approximately the testing, but that's not important. It's going to hurt tremendously for a long time, but if it's what's needed to escape this asylum, I would do it ten times over. Sled Dog Day 49 Violence against God, nature, or art, according to Dante's Inferno, this is what I have done to deserve this. I respect God. I have never seen nature. I have never brought a knife across to smooth cotton and tarnished the combined swirl of oils, resins, additives, and pigment. Yet I still feel it. Heat bears down on me like a canvas, causing the air in my cage to quiver like a sheet of cloth. 
I know that sled dog isn't doing much better. I went over to the window to talk to him a bit ago, to try and distract myself from the blistering heat. He was trapped in the Arctic there. He was only laying on the floor, trying to stay warmer in the endless bite of his room. If it hadn't been for the past six weeks, I'm sure that both of us would be dead. I'm going to stop here. I can't concentrate anymore. Aota. Results of the Beagle Experiment Author, Dr. Braylon Dragic It is with great delight and great sorrow that the Beagle Experiment has concluded as a success. Fourteen years of hard work, hypothetical theories, planning, critiquing, analyzing, friendship, and loss has led us to this moment of advancement and triumph. Subject 241A1 can see in 99.82% of darkness, and here at the same level as the average canine or feline. Subject 96185 is now able to stand up to 176 degrees Fahrenheit for several hours, and Subject 12135 can now withstand negative 81 degrees Fahrenheit for several hours as well. It is with this information that the Beagle experiment officially ends, and the subjects get prepared for extermination. The Blackout Incident Author, Dr. Braylon Dragic Date of Incident, December 4th, 2019 At 0219 hours, all three subjects were wheeled into the operating room, bound at their shoulders, wrists, and ankles with strips of full grain leather. The order they went in was subject 96185 on the far right, 24181 in the middle, and 12135 on the far left, closest to the door. Right as the procedure was beginning, Subject 96185 jumped, knocking the gurney over into Dr. Redacted's legs, and subsequently causing him to break the syringe. The struggle caused the other doctors to leave their post to help Dr. Redacted. While they were busy, Subject 12135 stole the scalpel from the desk nearby, and cut free from the restraints and running out of the doors and into the air docks. After the doctors discovered him missing, they launched guards to search for the missing subject, they didn't check the air vents. They reached below freezing temperatures in the winter. However, Subject 12135 could handle it because of the trials he partook in during the Beagle experiment. Moving through the vents, he reached the electrical room and cut power to the entire hospital. The doctors were unable to see what they were doing back in the operating room, and that allowed Subject 24185 to steal the scalpel, cut himself free, and knock out the doctors. He then freed subject 961A1 and knocked out the rest of the doctors in the operating room. The three met up and escaped the facility by jumping out of a window. An ongoing manhunt is ensuing in the woods surrounding the facility, but I have a gut feeling that we aren't going to find them. I raised them too well. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you if you are troubled and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut down from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might on the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at among all those who have believed. The Bible 2 Thessalonians 1 6-10 Horrific Experiment Brought to Light by Wayne Newman Friends Janie McLaughlin and Amber Erickson were going on a cross-state road trip when they discovered three teenagers stumbling out of the road on the side of I-84. According to recorded testimony, the teenagers were wearing hospital gowns and no shoes. The two of them invited them into the car and drove them to the nearest hospital. Two of the teenagers had superficial frostbite on their feet and all three needed to face a psychological treatment for emotional trauma. They told local authorities that the experiments that they had been forced into in the lab that it took place in, which was torn down following the experiments. They also told authorities that they had no names, but they went by code names, Erebus, Aota, and Sled Dog. Following the confession, the FBI visited the hospital. They found documents detailing the experiment, 
and a young woman named Elaine Shaw locked in a prison-like room after she had tried to free the teenagers. The head doctor of the experiment, Dr. Braylon Dragic, was charged with four counts of false imprisonment and three counts of crimes against humanity. Subsequently, he was sentenced to death by lethal injection. His last words were, I guess she was right. This is the kind of stuff that gets you old Sparky. Mrs. Shaw is currently receiving treatment for psychological trauma caused by her stay in the solitary confinement room. As for Erebus, Aota, and Suddog, whose names were later changed to Eric, Aiden, and Silas, they were taken in by Mrs. Shaw and they were able to start public schooling. More information on the experiment on the next page. Dear Mrs. Shaw, we have absolutely loved having Eric, Aiden, and Silas at our school. When we first met them, they needed some help breaking out of their shell, perfectly understandable for what they went through. However, once that happened, the remarkable students they are really have shown through. They are exceptional students and have many friends, and have an extreme passion for the arts. I personally understand their gift, as it is their form of spreading the darkness they experienced out of them and onto something else. Eric is an absolutely talented painter whose painting which depicted the room that he stayed in during the experiment, won first in the state art competition. Aiden has a gift for guitar and is going to play a personal piece at the end of the year ceremony. And Silas is a phenomenal writer that won a local writing contest. I wanted to let you know how they were doing, just as a heads up on what an amazing parent you are. Sincerely, Gail Fields. This is everything that I have. That is everything I have on the Beagle experiment. Is there more? Probably, but it doesn't matter now. For the record, this is Sled Dog. You need to be careful. I looked online and I got an ad. Whatever you do, don't click on it. Do not sign up. Because it was an ad for a government experiment. One meant to push the boundaries of human evolution.